guest speaker today this came from a far away and we've even been able to glimpse him a couple times as he gets up and gives us little tidbits but today we get the full jerry Jerry and I have just, we, we've been meeting for lunch occasionally. I'm just getting to know him and to hear his story. But what, what, a, what a wonderful resource he is. And uh, are you going to share anything about what's happening in your job? Yes. Okay. Then I'm going to sit down. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Jerry. But my full name is Son Jerry Kemius. I have been in the U.S. for about uh, ten years now. Um, it's this this year is going to make eleven. I am I have two siblings. I have um, we are a family of five. Um, I've lived in Sussex County for those about ten years. I went to University of Delaware. Uh, for college, but uh, so that's about four, four years in Newark, the uh, remainder um, in Sussex. I worked um, as a teacher uh, after college. I taught um, Sussex Central High School, taught French and Spanish. Uh, I'm fluent in French, Spanish, English, Haitian Creole. I um, also worked as a community guide. I um, Right now I work as a chaplain um, Delaware Hospice. The wonderful thing about it is when I started, I st started in Dover. Uh, but last week I got a call and I had been thinking about it because driving from Georgetown to work, to go work in Dover in Kent County, because Kent County goes up, if I'm not mistaken, up to Townsend. Yeah. So that's the mileage adds up. And I had been thinking about a way to, to bring that up. But um, I got a call and they said, well, we've, we hired a new chaplain for Kent County. He lives in Middletown. And we are thinking, since you live in Georgetown, we're going to have you work in Sussex. <laughs> so now I have Georgetown, Seaford, Greenwood, Milford, Lincoln, basically the northern portion of, this, of the county. So I have that three days a week and the other two days I have Dover. I was sharing that with um, Pastor Bob this morning. It's amazing because when I started, when they offered me the position about two years ago, that's the one they actually offered me, the, the Sussex County. Yeah. So God took the longer route, the two years, <laughs> and he decided, okay, now you're ready. His timing. That's I could not have I could not have planned it even in my best dreams. I could not have designed it that way. Uh, my my parents and siblings they send their greetings. Um, they are not able to they were not able to make it this morning, uh, but they hope in the future to to be able to visit. Uh, for the message this morning, I would like for you to open your Bible, Mark. Chapter 10, verse 46. It reads, uh, we're going to read from verse 46 to verse 52. Mark chapter 10. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, 
have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up on your feet. He is calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came back to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, Jesus said. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Alleluia. Please sing with me. Alleluia. 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 Bartimaeus saw God's goodness. The context of the message, Bartimaeus was having a usual day up to that point, up to this point. The text says he was blind, he was by the roadside, and he was begging. His day was going as it has been for years. How about yourself? How is how is your day going? How is your week? How are things going in the new year so far? We may not be homeless like Bartimaeus was, but we have things going on. We have things going on at work. We have things going on in our relationships, our personal lives, and our health. We have loved ones who are sick. We have um, emotional burdens separations we all have things we have going on at that point when jesus came to visit jericho bartimaeus had a lot going on and i want you to imagine that on a day when jesus comes into your town to visit you what do you have going on This story, we can all relate to it because, in a way, when we meet Jesus, we don't meet him in our perfection. We don't meet him on a day when we are dressed at our Sunday best. We have all the bills are paid. We give. We have everything going on. All our relationships are going well. A lot of times when we meet Jesus, we are sitting. We are tired of standing up, so we are. We take a seat. We are tired of walking, so we stop, and we are just. We just stop. We don't. We don't. We have problems that we cannot fix, so we just. We stop. We're not. We're not working on a solution. We are just there. Bartimaeus was just there. There was nothing he could do for himself. He was there by the roadside begging. Until Jesus came walking into town. Now, keep in mind, he was blind. He had never seen Jesus. But he had heard. By faith. He was healed. That's the title of my message. He had heard of who Jesus was. He had heard that he had performed miracles. 
but he could not see. So he had to act on his faith. And he believed. He believed what he had heard about Jesus. You and I, I don't know about you, but actually no, I can say that none of us have been alive long enough to see Jesus when he was on earth, which means you and I, we believe because we have heard. Yes. We believe because we have heard what's in scripture. We have heard in church, we've listened to sermons, preaching, teachings of the gospel. We have heard about a God who has compassion, a God who loves us. For God so loves the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes shall have eternal life. We have heard of a God who, when we were imperfect, he loved us. And this story, he is meeting Bartimaeus in his imperfection. He is blind. He is begging. He is homeless. When you and I, when we go pray, on what basis do we pray? Bartimaeus was, at, he went to meet Jesus to ask about compassion. He did not go. Notice when you read the text, he says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He did not say, Jesus, my name is Bartimaeus. I am from the family of so-and-so, and I need you to do this for me today. He did not say, I have, my father served this place and that place. We have given this amount of money, and we are asking for this. Maybe his family was rich. Maybe they were not. But in that moment, it didn't matter. It didn't matter because when he went to meet God, he only had his faith to hold on to. He was begging, which means he had nothing to offer in exchange. The only thing he could present with was his faith. He did not go with money in his um, a container that he said, I am paying for healing. This is what I'm bringing. He did not say, I look good today. I should, live I should live with something. He was sitting by the roadside. He probably did not look that impressive. However, he knew one thing. Yes, he didn't have money. He didn't have the family status. He didn't have the rich background, but he knew that if what he had heard about Jesus was true, he would be healed. If what he had heard about the miracles he had performed, the people were blind and they saw, the people were dead, Jesus resurrected them. If those things he had heard, if they are true, if what they had been saying about Jesus was true, then he too, he would receive something. When you and I pray, we can pray based on God's compassion. We can pray based on the fact that he is a loving God. That when we go to him, we're not going to get his attention. We're not, we don't have to go with something, with money or with our time in church to say, I'm bringing this. I want your attention for a few minutes. No. Nothing we, nothing we could give God to get his attention. 
but we don't have to. Because if Bartimaeus, he was blind, he did not have anything, he was begging. If he acted on God's compassion, you and I, we too, we can go to God and ask for something. Remember I asked you, how, how are things going? I don't know what you have going on, but maybe there is something, there is something that's been burdening you. Maybe there is something you've been struggling with, a health situation, something at work, something in your relationship that it's burdening you to the point where the only thing you can do is to go to God about it. No one could fix Bartimaeus' situation. He had been sitting there for years. If someone could fix it, we hope they would have fixed it. No one brought him in and took care of him. We have things we carry inside. We have problems that only God can fix. Things we have going on, things we would things we don't share with even our best friends. Things that are so personal that we are looking for someone we can go to and say out of compassion will you do this for me? Bartimaeus Ask Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He did not say, son of David, I have 20, what, silver coins. Give, I want to see. He did not say, son of David, I will follow you to the end of the earth. I want to see. He said, have mercy on me. He recognized that what he was asking, he did not deserve it. He is not asking it because God owes him. Yeah. Yeah. Oftentimes, you and I, we can get caught up in the idea that we are asking because we deserve here. We come here, so we deserve to live with something. God doesn't owe us. He is God. He cannot owe. We can often have the impression that if we've been in church for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, certainly that's worth something when we go to God in prayer. Those years of service. Or we give this month, this week, we give more than we usually do. So when I go to God in prayer, I'll have his attention more than I usually do. Or I read my scripture this week more than I usually do. I sung three worship songs, prayed for three hours, fasted, six days a week, certainly that counts for something. In this case, no. He asked on the basis of compassion because he had faith. He had faith that God was a God of kindness. That if he get if he gets to the point where he has a meeting with Jesus, Jesus will see his situation, will see his condition, and he will have mercy because he has compassion. It's the, it's similar to the woman who had the sickness. If he can get, if she can get close. Enough in his presence. 
or the four gentlemen when their friend was paralyzed, if they can so much as get in his presence, he will see them and he will have compassion. When we pray, let's pray to God as if he is a God of compassion. Let's pray as if, to God as if when he sees our pain, he sees our suffering, he will take heart. He, when we go to him and you say, Lord, I have reached my wit's end. I have nothing else I can do. He's not going to say, well, keep trying. I have worked for miles and miles. I have nothing else. Keep trying. Remember the story in the Old Testament, the woman who only had a little bit of wheat and a little bit of flour and oil left. And the prophet went to her and asked for food. He did not, she did not say, Notice when she said that's all he had, God did not tell the prophet to tell her, well, go figure it out. It's tough life. He is a God of compassion. We can count on his compassion. When we are struggling, when we are in pain, when that sickness that's been wearing on you for 10 years, when you finally get to a point and you say, God, this has been wearing on me for years. He's not going to look away. When the mortgage has not been paid for three months and the eviction notice is on the door, he's not going to look away. When the rent is not being paid and they are threatening to throw your stuff out onto the street, he's not going to look away. When you have not ate for days and you don't know where food is coming next, he's not going to look away. He is a God of compassion. We can count on that. Bartimaeus counted on that. He had heard about who Jesus is and he counted on the fact that he is a God of compassion. If I can get in his presence, he will have mercy on me. Notice that when he shouted the first time, he met some resistance. In our pursuit of God, we will face resistance. We will get tired. Sometimes we just, we, we get tired by nature. We are humans. Sometimes we face other types of resistance spiritually. Sometimes it's things going on in our lives that gets in our way of meeting God. However, just like Bartimaeus, don't stop. Pray more. Pray more. Not because praying more will get... God's attention, but pray more because you need to keep praying until you get into God's presence. Something will change when you get there. Which means whatever resistance you are facing, have the determination to keep praying. If praying with someone is not working for you, pray by yourself. If singing that song is not working for you, don't sing. Pray. If your vocabulary is not good enough, that's fine. Pray. Prayer is not about words. Prayer is about the heart that has a commitment that 
I am looking to get into his presence, which means I'm going to do whatever I need to do to get there. I believe when I get into his presence, whatever is burdening me, I will find a solution. So whatever I have to do to get there, I'm going to do it. In his case, he had to shout louder because the people told him to be quiet. Things in your life will tell you to be quiet when you are pursuing God. Keep praying. Like Bartimaeus, keep praying because remember why you started praying in the first place. When he met the, when he faced the resistance of people to talk, who told him to be quiet, I believe he kept praying because he remembered why he called son of David in the first place. If not, he would have stopped when they told him to stop. But he remembered, I started calling because here I am by the roadside. I have this problem that no one else can fix, which means by faith, I am praying that I, he will do something for me. He will have compassion on me. Maybe it's been 10 years. You've been praying for the sickness that's been wearing on you. Maybe it's been 20 years since that relationship broke down and you've been praying about it. And lately you've been feeling tired. You don't, you don't have the strength to pray that you had when you started praying 10 years ago. Keep praying. Remember why you started praying. And when he walked towards Jesus, when Jesus asked for him, He left everything. He left his cloak. He left the cup, he went, the plate he was asking for money. And he walked. In order to get to God's presence, there are times we will have to leave things that we have to get there. We will have to leave behind the fact that we have an important job. We will have to leave behind the fact that our name, there are places people walk into, our name means something. When people walk into offices and they say, Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so, it means something. There are times you'll have to leave that behind because to pursue God, to get to truly in His presence, only your faith will take you there. Your last name will not take you there. How much is in your bank account is not taking you there. How much you gave this month is not taking you there. How many people you fed while you were out in the community will not take you there. Only your faith will take you there. Like Bartimaeus, have the faith to leave those things. It's not that they are not important, but to the place you're trying to get. To God's presence. To see his compassion. Like Bartimaeus. Leave those things. And walk. Walk towards Jesus. Walk with joy. Koyamash. Walk because you have reached that place. The place you are trying to reach is to get to the point where he sees you. I was not there. We were not there. But I can imagine when they told Bartimaeus to get up and walk because the Jesus is calling for him. I can imagine he felt something different. Something had changed. He had entered the presence of the God of compassion. He had he, he expected 
something. Which means he walked faster than he usually does. When we are praying, when you feel like you are getting closer and God's presence, pray with that expectation that you will get there. Just like Pastor was reading when he was at the temple. And he was measuring the water. Maybe you're here and the water is here. But the place where you need to go is there where the water is here. You, it does not mean that if you stay here where you will not find grace. Yes, you will find grace. But there is more grace when you get here. And you get here and the water is here. But the what you're not going to get there if you just stay here. Yeah. If you stop praying, you'll not get there. You have to walk just like Bartimaeus walked. He left where he was standing. Yes. And again, I'll say this. When he was there, God provided. He was blind, but he 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 was alive. God provided. He ate. People gave to him. But he wanted more. How much grace you, you have today? Do you want more? Are you just okay with just being by the roadside? Are you just okay with just a little bit for today? And that's okay. A little bit for every day. When you could get into the temple. To the place where you are. Abounding in grace. Yeah. One of the, the key messages of the gospel. Is the idea. The closer you get in the relationship. The more you experience God. In the case of Bartimaeus. He wanted to experience the grace that is so abounding that he changed his life. He was no, the, he, it would change his life to the point where it would restore his sight. He was no longer content with just being the blind who was sitting by the roadside. He wanted more. He wanted a deeper grace. He wanted a grace that He would no longer be the same. For all intents and purposes, when he met Jesus in that encounter, it changed his life. It changed who he is. He, was, he would no longer be the same person who was sitting by the roadside begging, being blind. I'm not saying praying 30 minutes a day is not enough. I'm not saying worshiping when you have time is not enough. But there is a level of grace that you have to reach sometimes. There, is so, there are times when you are pursuing God at a level where you have to go deeper. You have to get up from where you are, from that place where you're comfortable, from that place where it's convenient, from that place where this is fine for now, to the point where I want to meet him. Yes. 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 I have heard things about him. You and I, when we pray today, we pray because when we read that scripture, we read the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Moses, the God of Joshua. We have not met him in person. We pray by faith. We pray because we believe those things we read in scripture, we believe them to be true. And that faith, we base our prayer on it. 
He asked for healing. He could have asked for anything. He could have just asked for some money. He could have just asked for clothing. But he asked for something. Notice, he asked for something that only his faith could ask for. If he was asking just out of his material needs, he would not ask for healing. Because to ask for healing, he had to believe that what he had heard was true. He had to believe that Jesus can truly heal him. So he asked for healing. What are you and I asking today when we pray? Do we ask for, do we make a prayer that's convenient? We ask for something that surely we know we're going to get. Or do we challenge our faith and ask God to do what's impossible? When Bartimaeus asked, in our eyes, in our world, he is asking for the impossible. Let's pray with the faith that challenges what we believe is possible. The faith that tells us, I have not seen it yet, but I've heard that God can do this. So here I am. I'm asking. What are you praying for today? Please close your eyes with me. If there was something, just like Bartimaeus, for him, it was his healing. If there was something that you could ask of God in His presence today. What would it be? Just like Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? If He asked you the same question right now, what would your answer be? Maybe you've been sick for years and you want healing. Maybe your relationship is falling apart and you want God to restore it. Maybe things are not going well financially and you want God to provide. What do you want God to do for you? It's a question he asks us every day. Sometimes we are not listening. Sometimes we're not aware of it, but he's asking the question. And you and I, I pray that you and I, we would have the faith. We would have the faith to realize our situation, to realize where we are, and to realize that the only way we can get out of where we are is by faith. There are problems you have more money will not fix. There are problems you have getting a job that pays more money is not going to fix it. Relocating to a different place is not going to fix it. An encounter with God will fix it. If we believe God's word then we believe that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Which means today, he is also out and about and is looking to have an encounter just like he did with Bartimaeus. He is looking to have an encounter with you and I. And in that encounter, he is going to ask, what do you want me to do for you? Whatever it is, no need is too great for God. 
Whatever the answer to that question is. Because sometimes when you and I, we ask things, we hesitate before we ask something so big. But remember, he is God. Nothing is too big for him. That illness, it might be too big for the doctor you've been seeing, but it's not too big for God. I don't know why God keeps pressing on that. That illness, it's not too big for God. For whoever is speaking today, that illness is not too big for Him. He wants to encounter you where you are in that illness, in that situation. He wants to encounter you there. You and I. Let's walk in our faith. And in that faith, we will ask God what we need. He is a God of compassion. He is not going to laugh at you. He is not going to walk away from you. He is not going to ridicule you. He will see you. And he will have compassion. May God bless you.